Welcome back to Organic Chemistry 2 Synthesis. Yeah? In this lecture, we'll be looking at the reactivity of alcohols and we'll start out by one, two more examples of how to make them. Let's jump straight in. We can obtain our desired alcohol uh, by acid catalyzed hydration of an alkene. Yeah? So, here in this example, you have uh, two methyl propene here, yeah? an alkene. Uh, and by treating it with diluted sulfuric acid, you get a tertiary alcohol, yeah, your tert or T butanol here on the right hand side. Yeah, so how does that work? Well, uh, in the first step, you protonate this double bond. Yeah, and you generate a planar carbocation here and now residual water acts as the nucleophile yeah, and can attack this uh, carbocation yeah, you eliminate an H plus along the way and you get your uh, your desired alcohol. Yeah, this reaction is said to be regioselective. Yeah, because you are uh, essentially um, selecting for the more stable carbocation. Because of course there are two ways how you can protonate uh, such an alkene. Yeah, so let's have a look at the energy profile of such a reaction. So you would start out with your alkene here in the center. And now there are, of course, two ways how you can protonate this double bond, as we discussed. So your one of the tra possible transition states would be for your proton to be added to the central carbon. Yeah. So you would build up a partial positive charge here. And a partial negative charge on your acid. Yeah, for example, uh, in the example on the left-hand side, uh, uh, if you are HA acid is H3O plus. Yeah, then your A minus after removal of a proton would be your H2O. Yeah, so your nucleophile. So um, right. So in the intermediate, uh, in the transition state, yeah, you would build up a positive charge on one of the terminal carbons, and as a result, then after protonation, you would get your uh, your carbocation on one of the terminal carbons. Yeah. The other uh, alternative is protonation at the terminal carbon. Well, let's try it again. Let's put the hydrogen here. Yeah, so you will be breaking this bond here as so and building up a partial positive charge on the, on the central carbon and a partial negative charge on your A. Yeah. Now, if you think about um, uh, the stabilizing factors, yeah. So you might remember this is sigma back donation, yes, yeah? so the positive charge in the planar carbocation situated in an empty p orbital, yeah. So any carbon hydrogen bond, yeah, which is situated nearby can always rotate parallel to this empty p orbital yeah and stabilize this this uh, partial positive or real positive charge yeah as a consequence your planar tertiary carbocation here will be the more stable one yeah so the, the transition state here this one 
will be also lower in energy as a consequence. Yeah? Simply because here in this transition state you're already building up a partial positive charge on your central the central carbon. Yeah? So this reaction will be indeed the preferred one. Yeah? So this will be going faster than the competing reaction with the higher energy barrier. Yeah, and this is how you get to uh, yeah uh, to your substitution at the central carbon to give you your tertiary alcohol. Yeah. The relative rates yeah, are reflected, uh, reflect the uh, transition state stabilization. Yeah, so the more substituents you have on, your, on the positive charge which you're generating during the acid catalyzed hydration, mm -hmm. the more stable the resulting carbocation will be. Yeah, and the faster this reaction proceeds. We've seen in the last slide that acid catalyzed hydration of an alkene gives you the uh, more substituted alcohol. Yeah? Hydroboration, on the other hand, can reverse the regiochemistry of hydration. Yeah? So here in this case we have our alkene, yeah, and, uh, methylene cyclohexane, and we reacted first with borane, BH3, and then after workup with uh, hydrogen peroxide and uh, sodium hydroxide, yeah, which will give us alkaline peroxide, we get the less substituted alcohol. Yeah? So here our primary alcohol. The mechanism of this, uh, let's have a look at this now. So here in this example, um, our highest occupied molecular orbital is that filled high molecular orbital here of our double bond and the LUMO is a vacant 2p orbital on our boron. So what happens here effectively is, yeah, we have our, we can essentially draw this as a delta negative charge on our hydrogen and a delta positive charge on our boron. Yeah, so we know that we will be adding uh, this hydrogen to the more substituted carbon and we have a new carbon boron bond which is generated here. Yeah? So both these, um, these steps are concerted and we can write the following transition state here for this reaction. Yeah, so partial positive charge on the central carbon as we are protonating it. And here, the double bond being broken, a new carbon-hydrogen bond ge being generated, and a new carbon-boron bond being generated. Yeah. And as a result, we end up with a BH2 group here on the terminal carbon and a new hydrogen here added to the more substituted carbon. Yeah. Now this process, yeah, so our uh, boron is still set up yeah, to react with another alkene. Yeah, so this process can happen again and in fact again. Yeah. So if we get our tri-substituted boron here. And now this is the point where um, our second step, yeah, the workup comes into play. 
So here we are uh, we are oxi oxidizing yeah with nucleophilic alkaline peroxide, which will give us our alcohol. So here, yeah, we have our uh, empty or vacant 2p orbital on our boron and our alkaline peroxide, which can attack, yeah, giving giving us a new boron oxygen bond. Yeah, with a negative charge on our boron. Now, second in the second step, yeah, we get we break this boron carbon bond and generate a new carbon oxygen bond, kicking out the hydroxide. And now this hydroxide is free to attack the boron again. And the final step. Yeah, we're opening up this boron oxygen bond. Yeah. And yeah, so like this we generate our alcoholate, yeah, our O minus, which in turn gets protonated, yeah, and we get to our alcohol in the end. We can achieve the hydration of alkenes using metal salts as well. Yeah, and we'll be looking at two examples here on this slide. Let's start out with oxymercuration. Yeah, so here we are using mercury 2 acetate to attack an alkene. So let's have a look at the mechanism in a little bit more detail. Yeah, so again, the homo of this reaction is our filled um, pi molecular orbital of our uh, alkene. And we're attacking our delta positive mercury here, kicking out an acetate, yeah, to form this uh, mercurinium ion here. Yeah. Now, um, this on this merc uh, mercurinium ion, we have uh, mercury uh, with one attached acetate. Yeah, so a very bulky group. Yeah, so unsurprisingly, water, which acts as our nucleophile here will attack the more substituted end yeah, of this mercurinium ion so that the mercury with one acetate can go in the less hindered end of this of this chain. Yeah? And now we essentially deprotonate again. Yeah, for example, uh, yeah, the acetate can snatch up one of these protons or water can do that. And we get to our yeah, alcohol with an attached mercury here. Yeah, so we can um, we can break up this carbon mercury bond yeah, and replace it replace mercury with hydrogen yeah, uh, using a reducing agent. Yeah, and sodium borohydride will work just fine. Yeah, and we get our secondary alcohol here. Now on the right hand side, uh, we're operating either with, uh, let me just bring up the laser pointer, we're operating with uh, osmium tetroxide or potassium permanganate. Yeah, now both of these species are tetrahedral. Yeah, and this has some interesting mechanistic implications yeah, because we're essentially um, reacting uh, these with an alkene will give you dihydroxylation. Yeah, so the addition of two hydroxyls here yeah, syn to each other. So let's have a look at the mechanism of this reaction. So we're starting out with our tetrahedral osmium tet tetroxide here. Yeah? So this is an osmium 8. Oops. Uh, let me just try that again. This time with Roman numerals. Yeah, so this will be our osmium 8 species here. And uh, the LUMO is again our filled pi orbital. Yeah, and we get essentially concerted attack on our osmium tetroxide 
here in such a fashion yeah, to form this osmate ester. Yeah? So we form this uh, five-membered ring here, yeah? which can now then in turn be cleaved by water, yeah? which adds on to the osmium. Yeah? So this is now an osmium six. Yeah? And we eliminate an osmium hydroxide yeah, to give us to give us our dye alcohol here. Yeah? So we can redraw we can redraw this molecule with a carbon chain in the plane of a paper. Yeah? So there is free rotation around this bond as you know. Yeah? This is, uh, these are both sp3 hybridized carbons, so free rotation. And when we do that, yeah, we get to molecule which we've drawn above already. With both of these OH groups sin to one another. Let's have a brief look at epoxidation reactions and epoxide chemistry. Now epoxides, as depicted here, are very useful compounds um, yeah, to mask uh, the alcohol functionality um, to uh, react it and, and to interconvert it and generate new alcohols from it. Yeah? Um, now let's have a look at first at how epoxides are formed. Yeah, so the, in the example above, we can essentially get our epoxide uh, from the basic treatment of a bromohydrin. Yeah? So here we have one such bromohydrin. Yeah, and bromohydrins can well essentially be obtained by the reaction of an alkene with bromine in water. Yeah? So now to form the epoxide, yeah, we essentially deprotonate our alcohol with with a base, yeah, generating our alcoholate here in the first step, and now this anion is set up for an intramolecular reaction, yeah. So we're essentially forming our three-membered epoxide ring and kicking out a bromide, yeah, and like so, we get our bromide anion and an epoxide. We can also form our epoxides by direct epoxidation using a per acid. Yeah? As you see on the left hand side here, metachlorobenzoic acid or MCPBA for short. Yeah? So the name suggests what's going on here. The per in per acid should signal you to you, yeah. So there is an oxygen oxygen bond here, yeah, as in peroxides. And uh, now we can react our alkene here. Hang on, you bring up a laser pointer here. We can react our alkene in a one step oxidation using MCPBA, yeah, to get our epoxide and free chlorobenzoic acid. Yeah, so the mechanism of this reaction, yeah, we again we have. Um, the homo of our pi orbital, yeah, of our filled pi molecular orbital. Right, like so. So this is the homo. That's the filled pi. Yeah, so here this is where our reaction starts. And then we have our per acid. Yeah, so I'm just going to abbreviate here all that stuff with R. Let me just bring in a different color for the LUMO. So the LUMO is the empty sigma star orbital of our oxygen oxygen bond. Yeah? Let me try to draw this in. I know this is very small, but I hope you can sort of follow that. You remember how the sigma star looked like approximately. 
So this will be out of phase. Here again, out of phase. Yeah, so this will be our Lumo. Yeah, so let's see. M, oops, empty sigma star of the oxygen oxygen bond. Yeah. Now this reaction, again, this is a concerted mechanism, so a lot of things are happening at the same time. We're breaking the carbon-carbon double bond, yeah, so the attack starts in our HOMO, yeah, the filled pi orbital. We're attacking the LUMO, the empty sigma star, yeah, and forming, we're breaking the oxygen-oxygen bond. Yeah, and now you can pick up this hydrogen atom and react with the other carbon. So we can bring up the laser pointer again to see what's going to happen next. So now um, epoxides, yeah, as you see here, these are highly strained three membered rings. Yeah. Um, and they, they can be opened up yeah, by, uh, SN2, by the SN2 attack of nucleophiles. Yeah? So we can use a range of nucleophiles, as you can see here. Yeah? And of course, this works in an anti-fashion. Yeah? So the nucleophile attacks from the other side. Yeah? So essentially that the nucleophile and the alcoholate end up anti or trans to one another. And now you can essentially reprotonate your alcoholate again, yeah, to get your well, you open up epoxide and alcohol. And like this, you can also add, yeah, if you use OH minus as your nucleophile. You can uh, thus add two OH groups anti to a double bond. In the previous lecture, we've seen how to convert carbonyl compounds into alcohols. Now we can reverse this process using sodium dichromate in sulfuric acid. Yeah. So uh, treatment of secondary alcohols, yeah, with sodium dichromate, will result in the oxidation of these alcohols to ketones. Yeah? So the mechanism is as follows. Our dichromate yeah, readily gives us um, in an aqueous solution a tetrahedral chromium-6 anion, yeah? which we can then protonate To give us a planar chromium-6 compound. Yeah? Now this planar chromium-6 compound is now set up to react with the oxygen lone pair of our secondary alcohol, like so. Yeah, we can snatch up a proton from solution. Yeah? And like so, we get our chromate ester. Yeah? Um, and this chromate ester is now set up for reductive alpha beta elimination of uh, of a chromium uh, yeah of a chromium compound so uh, a couple of things will be happening here at the same time so let's see how this works so the chromium uh, um, one of the oxygen uh, groups of uh, our chromate ester can snatch up a neighboring hydrogen here from our alcohol we reform our carbonyl bond, yeah, our keto carbon oxygen double bond, and we break this oxygen chromium bond here. Yeah, and like so, we are eliminating our chromium four hydroxide. Yeah, and this, yeah, and, and the reaction it goes on then later, yeah, to form some chromium free species. Yeah, but in any case, we get here our ketones. Now, we might we might uh, want to try the same trick uh, 
with primary alcohols, yeah, so re oxidizing into aldehydes. However, we have, uh, we face a problem here, yeah. So over oxidation of aldehydes, in, in particular in the presence of water, uh, leads to the formation of a hydrate, yeah, as we've seen uh, some slides ago. And then via follow-up oxidation, we essentially get an acid, yeah. So if we try Jones oxidation on primary alcohols, we get essentially a mix of all of these products. Yeah. So the solution to this, obviously, is to avoid water. Yeah. And uh, this can be achieved by uh, this uh, pyridinium chlorochromate, yeah, or PCC compound here. Yeah. So here we would work in um, in uh, uh, water-free conditions, yeah. Alternatively, and this is more advanced, uh, but uh, we'll see that in uh, in the next year uh, is uh, the Desmartin reaction of swell oxidation. Now, as a revision reminder, you will remember from organic chemistry one that alcohols never react directly with nucleophiles, yeah. So this doesn't happen. Um, we need to activate uh, the OH group somehow. If we want it to leave, yeah, and this can be achieved, for example, by protonation, yeah. So here we're essentially protonating our H group. Yeah, now we've essentially uh, with this cation we have a, a very good leaving group, yeah. So we can eliminate water. Yeah, to get uh, uh, our planar carbocation, yeah, which then can be attacked by a nucleophile to give us our desired product. Now, this isn't always possible. Um, so uh, there are other ways of activating a hydroxyl group, yeah, and this can be achieved, for example, yeah, by tosylation. Yeah, this is usually done in pyridine. Yeah, so here. Uh, again, we face the same problem. Our hydroxyl is not a good leaving group, yeah. So we react it with tosyl chloride, yeah. So now we've essentially uh, generated here a tosylate, yeah. Let me just write that down here. Yeah. So in our tosylate here. It's now a very good leaving group, which can in turn facilitate an SN2 reaction. Yeah, so a nucleophile can come in, kick out your tosylate, yeah, and you generate, uh, for example, if your nucleophile is an iodide, you would generate your alkyl iodide. Yeah, so the tosylate itself. So you can see here on the top right hand side, it's a very stable anion. Yeah, so you see that you can easily delocalize this negative charge around here. Um, yeah, and hence, since it is a very stable anion, it is also a good leaving group. Yeah, so we can generate our tosyl chloride. From uh, toluene parasulfonic acid, yeah, and reacted with phosphorus pentachloride, yeah, and this will give you quite a mouthful of a name, yeah. So here you see toluene parasulfonal chloride uh, or tosyl chloride for short, yeah. Now this tosyl chloride is uh, set up to react with our oxygen lone pair from our alcohol. Yeah, so you essentially again can form an intermediate and you kick out your chloride. And now here comes a reason for why you're running this reaction in pyridine. So your pyridine deprotonates resulting tosylate. Yeah. So you generate your pyridinium salt here.
and your tosylate, yeah, which is now set up for further transformation. Yeah, and the transformations we can do with this is, as we saw uh, at the very top from this example here, yeah, you can you can perform substitutions yeah, on this on this uh, tosylate now, for example, um, using iodide yeah, as a nucleophile to generate your alkyl iodide. Yeah. Likewise, you can perform eliminations. Yeah, since uh, the tosylate is now such a good leaving group, you can quite readily deprotonate here in an anti-fashion, kicking out your tosylate again and forming your transalkene. Yeah. Alternatively, you can also um, replace your tosylate with an H minus equivalent. Yeah. So it means reduction, for example, with, uh, using lithium aluminum hydride to give you your alkane. Yeah. Or you can attempt esterifications. Yeah. So even um, a very good leaving group like uh, like this carboxylate here is now good enough a nucleophile to kick out the tosylate and uh, produce your ester. Analogous to tosylation, uh, we can activate our hydroxyl group by mesylation. Yeah? This is usually done in triethylamine, which acts as a base. Yeah? Uh, the main difference to tosylation, which you've seen on the previous slide, is the presence of alpha hydrogens here on our mesyl chloride. Yeah? So let's draw all this in. Yeah? So this is our mesyl chloride here. Or MSCL for short. Yeah, and as I said, the triethylamine can pick up one of these hydrogens. Yeah, we're forming a carbon sulfur double bond. And in the next step, we can essentially kick out the chloride. And we're generating here this planar species yeah, with a delta positive sulfur and two electron withdrawing oxygens right there. Yeah? So this is now set up yeah, for nucleophilic attack by the oxygen lone pair. Yeah, and now uh, our molecule, yeah, our protonated oxygen here, this is now set up for intramolecular hydrogen migration. Yeah. to give us our mesylated alcohol here. Yeah, so this is the equivalent uh, in a shorthand ROMs. There we go. Yeah. So this step, as I said, this is uh, hydrogen migration. Or tautomerism. So as in the previous examples yeah, of uh, our tosylate, yeah, our mesylate is again a very good leaving group. Yeah, so this is a very stable anion and can now be essentially kicked out by subsequent reactions. Final chloride uh, or SOCl2 is uh, extremely useful in turning alcohols into the corresponding alkyl chlorides. Yeah, the mechanism uh, is somewhat analogous to what you've seen in the previous slide. Um, here, the uh, oxygen lone pair um, is again the nucleophile, yeah, or alcohol is a nucleophile, and attacks the delta positive sulfur here in our thionyl chloride, which is the electrophile in this reaction. Yeah, so let us draw in the arrows of this mechanism. Yeah, as I said, we have an attack of the oxygen lone pair on this delta positive 
sulfur atom here. And the next step, we can reform the sulfur oxygen double bond and kick out one of the chlorides. Yeah, we can deprotonate our oxygen. And like so, we're essentially getting our chlorosulfide ester. Yeah, now this chlorosulfide ester is essentially set up to eliminate sulfur dioxide as a gas. Yeah, so um, uh, this is again a, a concerted mechanism, yeah, in a four member transition state here, where we are breaking the sulfur chloride bond. Yeah, making a new sulfur oxygen bond, yeah, reforming this double bond here, breaking the oxygen rest, yeah, oxygen carbon bond, and making a new uh, bond between our alkyl rest and the chloride. Yeah, so you can uh, you can depict it with curly arrows like so. Yeah. And we are effectively eliminating our sulfur dioxide. And we get the desired alkyl chloride here. Yeah, now we will circle back to final chloride. Uh, when, we'll, when we talk about the reactivity and the reactions of amines. Yeah, because final chloride is a, a great way of activating carboxylic acid uh, um, for coupling reactions, for example, with amines. Yeah, so here we are essentially turning this OH group into, uh, uh, so this is a carboxylic acid into um, uh, an acid chloride. Yeah, and now this acid chloride is set up for. Uh, for coupling reactions with amines. So, and this concludes our excursion into the world of alcohols. And as you've seen on the last slide, yeah, the coupling reaction of acid chlorides with amines provides a, a great segue into the next part of this course. And uh, in the next part, we will be discussing amines. Yeah, and we'll start out with a brief introduction. Um, of uh, how they look like and what their physical properties are. See you next time.